It is a time for Hollywood to hear this story. Montia Sabag admitted to spending three intimate days with Kevin Hart in Vegas. But I'm not going to also allow a person to to have financial gain off of my mistakes. Stand-up comedian, movie star, entrepreneur, and now serial cheater? Well, things are not looking good for Kevin Hart, and they are taking a crazy turn in the Hart Media universe as one of his assistants went on an infamous blogger's show, Tasha K's platform, to expose every little dirty secret that Kevin has allegedly been hiding from the world and his wife. And now the blogger, Tasha K, who was sued by Cardi B and lost the case, now has an entirely new lawsuit to battle from this new Kevin Hart interview that has the actor slash comedian suing her for defamation and extortion because allegedly she tried to get him to pay a quarter million dollars to not drop this extremely damaging interview. Now I don't know why a woman who was just sued for millions of dollars for defamation would then do this interview and try to extort a man who literally filed charges on his best friend for trying to allegedly do the same thing just a few years ago. He ain't going and you should have known that but well at the very least Tasha K got us some f great content to talk about. Like they had him on video with a woman in a hotel room. You think he give a damn about an interview? But putting that aside, these accusations made by one of his former assistants could force his personal public personas to collide once again. So in addition to now being labeled as a serial cheater, this woman named Maisha Shakes, who worked for Kevin Hart, is accusing the star of also having serious gambling issues and a bunch of other huge problems. And really, it's bombshell after bombshell at this point and the entire story is shocking to say the least so while she dropped it all on tasha k tasha k may be praying the price and we'll get into that as well as everything that has been said in the interview that you're gonna want to know about while also taking a deep dive into kevin hart's life and past and while this may be a pattern some of what the woman is saying may make sense but like always this is the church of joe stone podcast where we don't judge we just find the most shocking and provocative stories in the culture and take them to church and you can decide if kevin is a serial cheater with some serious issues that need to be addressed or if Tasha K and this assistant are just grasping at straws. Either way, it's on you and you gotta watch to the end to be able to let us know what you think about it. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. See, what makes this case an interesting one is that Kevin's past infidelity isn't exactly a secret. On pretty much every other instance in the past, the comedian has been really honest about the mistakes that he has made, getting ahead of the story before it can become a scandal and taking accountability even when no one asked him to. And it's been a great strategy in the past, but that doesn't seem to be the case this time. See, we have to go all the way back to 2003, when Kevin Hart was just a promising comedian and still six years away from his first stand-up special. This is when he would marry a woman named Tori, and they were together for about seven years, having two kids together with a son born in 2005 and a daughter in 2007. See, Hart was just 22 years old when he got married, so it wasn't all that surprising when they filed for divorce in 2010, citing irreconcilable differences. And in Kevin Hart's form and fashion, he was honest and open about the entire thing and even in 2016 he was very open about his feelings as a husband when he showed up on the Chelsea Handler talk show I was young I was young on my first marriage Chelsea I'm not ashamed to say it guys I got married at the age 22 okay I was I was still all over the place I didn't really understand the definition of marriage so I wasn't ready for it so I take responsibility I can say I messed my first marriage up I'm man enough to say that. And at the same time, that was when I was in the prime of my sexy. So don't blame me. <laughs> don't blame me. That's, that's when I was figuring it out. Um, but I will say that, I will say that me and my ex-wife, you know, regardless of the problems that we went through, we're in an amazing place now where we're friends, we're great parents, we're co-parents, but we have a relationship. And now that I've moved on and i met somebody else, you know, to make this step was a big step. So it took me some time. It took seven years. Now, it's interesting to note that Hart didn't get into any of the specifics when it came to exactly how he screwed up. And he always kept things close to the vest and tight-lipped in order to control the narrative and his public and his public persona when it came to his audience. This is roughly around the time that he married his current wife, Nico Hart, who may have had a pretty big role to play in ending the comedian's first marriage because there's been a lot of rumors and yeah, we'll get into them. You see, we know that Kevin and Tori filed for divorce in 2010. And even if Kevin started dating and Nico right after that, they would have been together for six years in 2016, right? Well, this is where it doesn't make sense. Because the math wasn't mathing when the internet streets got to this post that Nico would make. See, she would low-key or kind of confirm, maybe, that her and Kevin had been together way before his marriage ended in an Instagram post celebrating their anniversary in 2017. In the caption of this post, Nico would write that they had been together for eight years and married for one. Well, if that is true and those dates actually 
actually line up, then that means Kevin got back with her back in 2009 when he was still very much so married to his first wife, Tori Hart. And this would not go unnoticed. Just a few days later after this post went live, TMZ would catch up with Tori to get a reaction and let's just say she wasn't rushing to defend your boy Kevin, her ex-husband. It's just, you know, people are calling her out because they're saying, hey, if that's the timeline, then you must have been you know, messing around or something. I and... mean, numbers don't lie. You know, <laughs> dates don't lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, like, you know, she forced my hand to address this publicly. Because I'm going to tell you like this. The most important thing to me is my children. Absolutely. So if my children see something that she's right and that makes me look like a liar, no. I don't care about anything but how my children feel about me. I have always put Kevin's career first. I've always put him first, but I'm now forced to address this publicly because my kids matter to me and what yeah. they feel. Exactly what is being said now. What are these bombshells that his ex-assistant dropping? And why did it raise to the level where he felt like he needed to sue the podcaster who had her on her show? Well, Kevin Hart has spent about 20 years trying to build a certain image and persona for himself. And Maisha Shakes, the ex-assistant, has threatened to ruin all of that in just a little more than two minutes. And she would bring up one of the next big situations where the public found out that, well, Kevin Hart uh, likes the ladies. So back in 2017, and Nico Hart was pregnant with the couple's first child while Kevin was with his crew in Vegas. Now, you probably saw this go viral, but that trip would end up becoming memorable for all the wrong reasons. As it turns out, according to him, that he cheated on his pregnant wife with a woman named Montia. But that's not all. It would get crazier when Kevin Hart's infidelity was captured on a secret camera that had been placed in the hotel room, recording them going at it without their knowledge. Well, at least without his knowledge. Now, if that wasn't enough, the person who made the video allegedly intended to extort Kevin Hart for millions of dollars in exchange for their silence, which is why he came clean about what happened that night. I made a bad error in judgment and put myself in an environment where only bad things can happen, and they did. And in doing that, I know that I'm going to hurt the people closest to me, who I've talked to and apologized to, being my wife and my kids. It's a moment when you when you know you're wrong and there's no excuses for your wrong behavior. At the end of the day, man, I just simply got to do better. But I'm not going to also allow a person to to have financial gain off of my mistakes. And just as in the case before and in Kevin Hart fashion, he was open and honest and owned up to his mistakes while also making it clear that he wasn't going to let anyone blackmail him. Apparently, Tasha K missed that video. And even though it didn't look good in the public eye that he was cheating out in Vegas while his pregnant wife was at home, Hart was technically a victim at the same time because he had been recorded without his consent and she allegedly was a victim too and she even gave people insight to how she felt at that time while everything was going down did you know someone was filming your interactions absolutely with him not in the living area of the suite no now that obviously you know that do you believe you know who did the filming i have my suspicions now that i've had uh, you know a, a lot of time to you know really like think you know, um, but also I can't really discuss that because it's an ongoing investigation. The old woman made it clear that she had nothing to do with the alleged extortion. Montia wants the public to hear her side and set the record straight. What are you wanting to clear up? That I'm not a homewrecker, um, that I'm not an extortionist, um, I'm not a stripper. I'm not a prostitute. And it would later be revealed, at least according to Kevin or his camp, that the person who tried to extort the celebrity was one of his friends, JT Jackson. And the reason why I had to kind of back up was not just because of Kevin Hart's history of cheating, but also because this would give more context to what Maisha Shakes would then say in her interview with Tasha K when she came clean and exposed some things even about that situation that the public never knew and it doesn't put Kevin in a good light. So you see, it turns out that despite a Hartford apology, Kevin Hart may not have actually learned his lesson because if Shakes is to be believed, he made the same mistake again. The first scandal anymore. was with the first baby. Correct. The one in Vegas. Yes. So these other scandals. It's another one in the office. She pregnant again. Correct. With her second baby. And he's still leaving semen stains all over the counter. At the yes. heartbeat studio. Correct. And showering and then going home like. Yep, that's right. According to Shakes, Carl was getting busy at the office before heading home to his wife. And apparently she knew exactly who the woman was. She would have said that Kevin was having an affair with a woman named Connor Morgan, who worked as a flight attendant on his planes. She even told Tasha Morgan's Instagram account. If that ain't messy, I don't know what it is. And to be honest, even at this stage, this feels like information that we didn't need to know. Like if you wanted to hurt Kevin, you could have told his wife. Why are you telling the streets? I don't really understand but we here for it. Oh! 
<laughs> she got it. She on vacation every day. <laughs> when you see a bitch and she on, all she do is post vacation pictures with no nigga beside her, the nigga taking the picture. He say, no, nah, baby. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm going to take the pictures for you as many angles as you want, but I can't it, to ensure he don't go up in these motherfucking photos. But that would just be the beginning. Because between cheating on his wife, not once, but twice, allegedly, and now three times, allegedly, at least that we know of, because I guess that's information we need to know, and it wouldn't just stop there, at least not the accusations. His ex-assistant would then bring up his gambling addiction, or his alleged gambling addiction, according to her, and talk about exactly how deep that went. And even though it was only briefly mentioned in the snippet from the interview it paints a pretty concerning picture of what she says is actually true does kevin have a gambling problem or something kevin definitely has a gambling problem how bad very bad he, he spends at least three days a week he's gambling he plays high stake poker what how much like would he gamble like give me a number like per hand what the hell like what is i know it was over a million because i know he borrowed some money from dave becky one time who was his manager a million dollars? Mm-hmm. He gambles big, and it's poker. His game is poker. Now, it's no secret that Kevin Hart has a love for poker. He's been an avid player since 2010, and has even been a brand ambassador for poker stars. But if he's been losing more money than he's winning, well, that could be a problem if it affects his business and family life, which is what the ex-assistant is alleging. You see, the revelations by Shakes are still really fresh, and the situation is developing, but the fallout threatens to be absolutely insane, and this is just the beginning. But that wouldn't even be one of the most, I don't know, shameful parts of this entire interview, if it's all to be believed, because then the woman would go on to talk about Kevin Hart and the alleged extortion plot that we talked about earlier in the video where he said one of his best friends or ex-best friends tried to extort him. The problem with that is is that the man that got charged with extortion was acquitted of all the charges meaning that he beat him but now his name's been drugged through the mud by a superstar and he's claiming that basically Kevin Hart left him out to dry even though Kevin Hart knew that he was not guilty the whole time of what he was accused of which was extortion and if that's the truth well look cheating on your wife is one thing but being a bad friend that's hard to forgive. And again, this is all alleged, but if the man beat his case, which it seems like that is a fact, and Kevin came out and told us that that's the man who did it, well, I don't know. Something just seems fishy there. But let's move on to the fallout of what's going on now. So look, we have all these allegations, and we know Kevin may or may not have cheated on his first wife with his second one. And we know that he may or may not have cheated on his second wife while she was pregnant. I mean, there was a sex tape made without his consent, and he's admitted some of these things. And this is where Maisha Shakes enters the picture. The woman who threatens to ruin Kevin Hart has alleged that the comedian is a serial cheater, has had an affair with a flight attendant, and also has serious gambling problems. Now, how much of this is true? How much of this is just someone trying to make the most of their association with a big name in Hollywood? We don't know for sure. But let's look at what we do know and try to piece it together. So, again, earlier it was suggested that JT Jackson was the one who recorded the video that attempted to extort Kevin Hart. But Jackson actually reached out to Tasha K, and their conversation paints a completely different picture. JT did reach out to me January 4th, 2020, and said, Hello, Tasha. It's right here. He said, hello, Tasha. I just want to say thank you for keeping it 100. And in my opinion, riding for me during your segment regarding Kev, you won't regret it. I promise you. I'm so glad you see right through the bullshit. Just know I've been set up and framed for some shit I had zero parts of. I also know that Kevin Hart wasn't even fucking extorted. He's lying about that. Nobody ever contacted Kevin Hart and demanded anything. We have hardcore evidence to prove this. So I guess that's the... Because Kevin filmed the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, Jackson also told Tasha K that Motia Sabag was extremely involved in the entire situation. The woman from the hotel video. And Hart did all of this in an attempt to protect his reputation by making himself a victim. The fact that Jackson would end up to go on to having all the charges dropped against him makes it feel like there may be some truth to his words. Because, well, what? And it's also then the fact that Kevin and Aniko let the Vegas scandal be a part of his Netflix documentary, which sort of reinforced forces his perspective on things as opposed to anyone else's because he's the loudest voice in the room. He has the biggest platform and it doesn't really matter what happened in court if no one knows about it. Kevin was forced to come clean about cheating on his wife, who was pregnant by the way. <laughs> you publicly humiliated me. I just kept saying how the fuck 
Did you let that happen? And lastly, we also have a Nico sharing cryptic Instagram stories that just raise more questions. So with all of this going on, if your head got spun around, this next part is the craziest of them all. You see, and this is where we get into the lawsuit that Kevin is now filing against Tasha K. An extortion plot that Kevin Hart says that Tasha K had in regards to him. You see, according to these reports, the controversial YouTuber demanded a six-figure ransom in exchange for not releasing the interview with Maisha Shakes. Apparently, she wanted a quarter of a million dollars to keep her mouth shut with the lawsuit and also stating that Shakes had made false and defamatory statements regarding Hart. Both women are being sued for extortion and invasion of privacy. Shakes is also being sued for breach of contract and defamation and Hart is trying to get Tasha K, whose real name is Leticia Kibi, for intentional interference with contractual relations. Meaning that you ain't signed the NDA but you helped her violate her NDA so guess what? Now you get a lawsuit too. Now Tasha is no stranger in the getting in trouble for the things she has said on the show. It's a few years ago like like I mentioned before, she accused Cardi B of being a sex worker, getting addicted to hard drugs, and cheating on Offset, and even catching an STD, if I'm not mistaken, and she was eventually found liable of the damages for around $4.25 million just for the defamatory statements that she made against the rapper. And that's just one example of a lot. You see, Tasha K has a history of having a platform for the people, and only caring about her winos, that's what she calls them, and going with the gossip no matter where it takes her. But sometimes it leads to some fabrication in there which may or may not get her in trouble. Most notably, one of the recent issues she's had is with Will Smith's former assistants claiming to was with Will Smith's former assistants going on the show and saying that he caught the actor having relations with another actor, Dwayne Martin. Now, was there any proof to any of this? Nope, she just ran with it. Did Tasha K and then Jada Pinkett Smith herself threaten to sue her over that. And then even a few months ago, she criticized Beyonce's daughter, 11-year-old Blue Ivy, for dancing on the Renaissance tour, which she was doing the most appropriate dances on a world tour we've ever seen. But after spending a minute dissing the poor child, she wrapped up her comments with this. But if I'm paying $2,000 to see, I don't want to see a robot up there. She looked like the iRobot that be vacuuming my floors. So yes, Tasha has a reputation of her saying whatever she wants and just having to deal with the consequences. So as things stand, it looks like Hart and Tasha K have a legal battle on their hands. But we have to ask, should Kevin even bother? Look, I know that she has said a bunch of messed up stuff about him in the interview. But the fact is, we don't know what's true and what's not. And it's probably just going to bring more attention to this situation than it would have if he had just left it alone. And in the past, coming forward, coming clean and just sticking to the truth has worked for Kevin. And the thing about Tasha K is... Is if you go low, she is known for going lower to the point where that's her bread and butter and her brand. And I don't know if it is worth taking the court to just give her another high profile mark on her record because apparently she don't give a damn about being sued for defamation. And this will probably do more for her than it will for him. Now, the online reaction to all of this has been pretty interesting. Some people are happy that Hart is going after Tasha K and not letting her get away with it. Meanwhile, some are saying that Maisha Shakes is nothing but a clout chaser. And to be honest, that kind of holds true to me because I still don't understand why you came forward with this information. It would be one thing if he had did anything illegal. If you were saying that he was, you know, harassing the women in the workplace, that'd be one thing. But if it's simply him going about his grown man business that doesn't affect you in the least, well, I don't understand why we're here. What we know for a fact now, what we know for a fact right now is that the stuff Shakes told Tasha K in the interview only threatened to ruin Kevin Hart. But we also know that the comedian is a master at saying the right things at the right time and owning up to his mistakes. So the real question is whether it's really worth his effort to go after both women and drag his name in the mud along with them or just let it pass. I guess he may have made his decision. We'll have to see how that all plays out. Maybe that was a less public way of dealing with this, but maybe then he'd have to come off a quarter million dollars and that wasn't an option. So here we are. But the snippets from the interview were going viral. The case will continue to pick up steam as it proceeds. And hopefully this does not start a downpour of more women coming forward like we've seen in a lot of situations like this with worse and worse stories to tell about Kevin because to be honest I don't want to see the man tore down I'm a fan and I do think this really is not newsworthy but it is goddamn short amazing it is hell of a content unfortunately for him but let us know what you think in the comments I am Joe Stone and this is the church of Joe Stone where cool comes to pray you come to stay hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another video coming your way where we find the most shocking and provocative stories in the culture and take him to church I will see you in the next one